Yes, is a filmmaker and author. And with her book, Face One Square Foot of Skin, she wants to inspire all of us to embrace our aging face. Yes, please welcome Justine Bateman. Yeah. Really nice to see you because the last time I saw you was when we worked on a pilot together, which is a pilot for Hollywood. You do it and you see if it gets picked up. We worked on a pilot together 16 yeah. years ago. You remember? I do. I remember how funny you were. It was with Patricia Heaton and uh, yeah, back when I was acting. That was yeah. Great. So it's so it's really really good to see you. Very happy for you, all of this happening. It's great. Thank you, Justine. I appreciate that. Now in. in this is great because in face you talk about like uh, society. They have this thing where they hate women's aging faces. And it is it true that you were inspired to write it when you Googled yourself? Yeah, I am 56 now, but when I was around, don't even sleep. She's 56. Don't when stop. I was uh, I was like 40 or 42, and I and I was uh, I have another book called Fame. Yeah. So I was Googling my face to do so, a little bit of research for that. And um, yeah, the autocomplete was looks old. And I was like, do I? I mean, at the time I was like, and, uh, and I made the mistake of going the, right the down that rabbit hole. Girl. And it affected me so much more uh, deeply and for a longer period of time than I expected. Yeah. And then I, I worked through though. Go, I wanted to find out what was the root reason I was making them right and me wrong. And what was my root fear, my irrational fear? And then once I got through that, um, then I started thinking about society as a whole. Like, yeah. what are the root fears in uh, that we hold as a group that cause us to think that women's faces are broken and have to be fixed? And so the book goes into, it's based on my feelings and experiences with it, and then those of about 20 people I interviewed. And uh, so it, the format is 47 short stories where I go wow. into some of the reasons why somebody might have adopted that idea when it's really, it's, it's based in a fear. It's like, if people think I look old, then therefore... I, I am. And there's some fear there, because it's not about this skin. It's about fear you're not going to be listened to anymore, fear you're not going to find a mate, fear you'll lose your job, fear you won't have a job. But my position is that those fears already existed in you before your before face started you changing. But you know, it's so, we, we, we see in social media so much and it's always hitting us, plastic surgery, Botox, lipo, everything else. Why do you think that, that uh, that's so common today? And how does that make you feel? Well, I don't, there's never ever been a moment in society where we've, <laughs> when have we ever put photos of ourselves online incessantly? I mean, this is like a yeah, it's, crazy it's thing. Crazy. And then, you know. <laughs> Um, and I think people assume a level of um, uh, inspection or something. Yeah. Or like they subject themselves to it. They say, inspect me, inspect me, am I okay? Um, also, uh, you know, all the different, uh, you know, the fillers, the Botox, the face lifts. There's so many different things available at a uh, more affordable price point than, you know, then, in the 70s or something. That's another thing. It's like, you know, we have these words, the anti-aging, the, you know, age-defying uh, products. And you say in the book that that's just, over here in America, is just a marketing tool. Yeah, it's funny. One of the people I interviewed was a friend of mine who's, uh, um, uh, she was an executive uh, uh, with a cosmetic company, and she said we'd take the same product, exact same moisturizer, say. Yeah. And in France, you say, uh, you call it moisturizer. In the United States, you call it an anti-aging The same exact product? Solution. Because marketing, and I love marketing, you, but you either, you either solve a problem that people believe they already have, or you create a problem that they don't have yet. And then you make them think it's a problem. So there's, <laughs> so I love moisturizers. I mean, I've used them since I was like 14 years old or something on my face, like twice a day. But, but, I, I, just, I just want people to understand they're being marketed to. That right. the marketing tries to prick a fear mm -hmm. um, to get you to just don't buy it out of fear and don't change your face out of fear. It's well, an opportunity. You want to do it, but I not mean, if you want to do it, fine. But I say, like, first take the opportunity, get rid of that fear of not being employed or or not having a maid or not being listened to or whatever, because otherwise that fear is going to stay well, under always. the rug and keep making you... And poking at you. Yeah. I love it because Faith 
is being turned into a movie. Yeah. Congratulations. Tell me about that. Sure. Um, so the format is 47 short stories, so I took 14 of them and adapted them into a script. And, uh, and yeah, now we're just putting the casting together. There are a lot of parts, you know, because there's so many stories. Um, but we have really uh, great cast so far um, with uh, Carrie Ann Moss, mm. um, Mary Louise Parker, uh, nice. Isabel Furman, and uh, Liana Libierto, yeah. You have a great yeah. cast. So, and there's more to come. Those are four of like the 14 main parts. So we have a lot more to come and it's- Well, I'll tell you, if you need a 55 yeah. year old black woman, I'm available, I'm just saying. I'm into it. And I love being 55. I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. Just see. I just want to thank you so much for being here and talking about this subject that's so taboo to so many people, but it's so important. And Justine's book, Faith, is out in paperback right now, so go pick up a copy. Mm -hmm.